I'm sorry, I, I kind of equate it to like, well, the people on the that are living on the streets in the cities and all that are being taken care of by us. Should we just go out and shoot them? And greetings, everyone, and welcome to Buzz for Good, where we talk all things nonprofit, the people they serve, and the good they do. And today we are buzzing about cats and caps. Cats, as in the overpopulation of feral cats. And I'll be talking to a Salem, Virginia nonprofit that works to trap and neuter feral cats and then find homes where their rodent control expertise can be put to good use. And caps, as in those worn by high school graduates. Helping them afford this next step in their educational journey is a new River Valley nonprofit that provides free community college in exchange for community service. And I'll be sharing with you conversations I've had over the past several weeks with the inspiring folks, including former Virginia Tech defensive coordinator Bud Foster, who are part of this program. I am Michael Hemphill, creator and host of this radio show, as well as the TV show, Buzz, that airs every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. on Blue Ridge PBS. It's also available on our YouTube channel, at Buzz for Good. That's B-U-Z-Z, number four, good. Uh, You can also find them on our website, buzzforgood.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, even TikTok, all at Buzz for Good. I want to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors, Friendship, a senior living retirement community serving the Roanoke Valley, friendship.us, Partners in Financial Planning, a Southwest Virginia-based financial management firm, partnersinfinancialplanning.com, and First Bank and Trust, headquartered in Southwest Virginia, providing individuals and businesses with an exceptional suite of tools, resources, and solutions to navigate financial life, firstbank.com. Our TV show, Buzz, just received two Emmy Award nominations for a couple of episodes that we produced in 2023. Our Staying Connected Through Art at Roanoke City Public Schools, which was produced in partnership with the Roanoke Cultural Endowment and Art in Roanoke, received a nomination for the Emmy in the category of Education Schools. And our feature of The Least of These Homeless Ministry, in downtown Roanoke, was nominated in the Societal Concerns category. Now, the Capital Emmys recognizes excellence in television in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, and winners will be announced June 22nd at a gala in Bethesda. So, I hope you will keep buzzing for buzz during this time, and wish us luck. You can watch those episodes and all 47 of our episodes on our website, buzzforgood.com, and YouTube channel, once again, at Buzz for Good. Our 48th episode airs May 29th, starring New River Community College and its Access to Community College Education, or ACE, program. And it's that nonprofit I'll be sharing more about later in today's show. Our 49th episode features the Appalachian Trail Conservancy and the many nonprofit, governmental, and for profit organizations who work to promote and protect the Appalachian Trail, and specifically McAfee Knob. It will air in June. And then our 50th episode, a special one hour show, airs July 17th. And I am hosting a free celebration that's open to all that evening at the Grandin Theater in Roanoke. So uh, please stay tuned to our social media channels and again, our website, buzzforgood.com to keep up to date on all the latest. Looking a little further into the future, we are also working on an episode starring Mountain View Humane Society, which provides low-cost, high-quality veterinary services, including spay neuter of feral cats. Uh, Mountain View Humane is based in the New River Valley of Virginia, and coincidentally this week, I was introduced to a similar-minded nonprofit, Barn Cat Buddies, based in Salem. And they focus exclusively on saving and improving the lives of feral, homeless, stray, and abandoned felines in the southwest and central regions of Virginia. And here is my conversation with founder Diane Novak and President Judy Zemer. Diane, let me start with you. 
uh, why should we care about cats? Well, cats are everywhere. We're not going to um, avoid the fact that they're out there. What happens is often owners who are moving leave them behind or they abandon them and then they multiply. So what the ultimate goal is to stop that multiplying because the cats will, by natural attrition, die off on their own. Right. But unchecked, they will create more and more litters. And um, since they can have a litter at the ripe age of four and a half months, and wow. they can have litter all year round, mm -hmm. you can see how that is very different than the dogs two two times a month, uh, two times a year. Sorry, having a litter, they they can have a litter all year round, so that creates an issue. And uh, cats yeah, do and dogs. What, what, yeah, what what is that issue? Um, the issue is people, uh, restaurant owners, business owners are bothered by cats jumping into their um, trash bins, and they consider them a nuisance. Um, we think of them as rodent control technicians, where they're keeping down the mouse population and actually they're working animals in our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is when animal control comes in and they do what a sweep, what they call catch and kill, that does not answer the problem. The problem is answered when the animals that are existing there are fixed, spayed and neutered and ear tipped so you know that they're part of a managed colony. Of course, there has to be somebody willing to feed them for it to work. Mm -hmm. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, so your response to this was to found Barn Cat Buddies. And what so, happened? Yeah, yes. tell, tell me about just the, how, how that organization came into being. Well, I came from New York where I had a little spay neuter um, program there and I, made a promise to my husband that I would leave my cat trapping behind, but that didn't happen because <laughs> when we moved, there was a stray cat and the whole thing started all over again. Um, and what I noticed here in this county was that there was no hope for um, these unsocial, what we call community cats. They were just being rounded up, put in a cage for several days, and then killed. So it was very traumatic for the animal. It was probably traumatic for the staff to have to do this all the time too. And there was no end in sight. Um, I met somebody who, who wanted to do something. Her name was Tammy Javier, and she worked for Planned Parenthood in Franklin County. And she tried to get cats into barns, but she had no time to do it. And she didn't have an, uh, the idea she was working 40 hours a week and she ha would have to stop at farms and really do all this work. And we started to talk and I said, let's create something called Barn Cat Buddies and um, reach out to farms and barns and warehouses and see if they could use a working cat. And um, then that process started where um, I didn't start doing trapping uh, all the time. What I did was I would go to shelters and they would transfer a community cat into my trap once I had a barn home. So that was how the whole thing, Pardon? That's and that's what they do. still do. We still do that. Yes. That's the process. Gotcha. And so when did the organization come into being? It started in 2007 and it was incorporated in 2011 by a very generous um, donation from somebody that we helped from a distance. That's a cute story too. Her her grandfather used to feed a cat that she called Trouble, and because he the the cat would always get her grandfather in trouble with animal control. So um, she reached out to several different organizations to try to help trap this cat, get it fixed, uh, or get it a home. Actually, when Grandpa died, and nobody would respond except Barn Cat Buddies. And she was so grateful. Um, we did trap that cat. We got it fixed. We got it rehomed. And she was so grateful that she said, what can we do for you? And I said, well, in order to get donations, we really need our 501c3. And she said, done. 
So she paid for that. Wow. Nice. Nice. Well, here, here on Bus for Good, you've been listening to Diane Novak, who's the founding president of Barn Cat Buddies. And when we're also joined here by Judy Zemer, who's the current president of Barn Cat Buddies. Uh, and, and along with a, a dog in the background who's making his presence known. <laughs> but Judy, let me let me turn to you here. So you're the current president of Barn Cat Buddies. Yeah. And describe for us, you know, the process that you, you know, undergo in order to capture cats and then get them fixed. Okay. Uh, people will text, they will call, they will Facebook, whatever, and let me know that they need help. And I try to call them back as soon as I can. Sometimes it takes me a little time because I'm the only one doing it. Yeah. Um, but then I find out how many cats they think they have. And then I usually double that in my mind <laughs> because you don't always know how many are out there. Sure. And then when I'm able to get to them a couple of days ahead of time, I'll call them and I'll say, stop feeding. Don't feed for a couple of days because Usually only a hungry cat will go in a trap. Mm. Uh, so I go out there to them. I set up the traps and uh, bait them, cover them, whatever, and set them up. And then I wait. I don't leave it. Don't leave a trap unattended for more than the time that it takes me to go somewhere and go get something to drink or go to the bathroom because they will become victims if the cat goes in the trap and you leave it. They they can either get hot or if you don't do it, especially don't leave them alone at night because then other animals can come and attack them in the traps, which we don't want. And they will also destroy my traps, which mm -hmm. I don't want either. Sure. Um, our point is, like I tell people, we're all about the cats. I'm glad that it helps the humans. That's OK. But I am about the cats, getting them safe, keeping them safe and healthy and and finding a better life for them or making their life better as it is better by not breeding um because the cats male and female they totally run on their hormones they don't think about you know oh well oh that's a nice thing cat over there i'll go here no it's just totally driven the male can smell females in heat miles away and uh so that's all yes. they think about and to the detriment of their health sure so if we get them fixed, then they can calm down. Their bodies can, it takes 30 to 60 days for the bodies to calm down. And uh, then they can live a more calm life. If they've got somebody feeding them, taking care of them. They've gotten at least one rabies shot in their life, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they just, they become more calm. And then eventually they will pass on, as we all do. Sure. All right, so you once you trap the cats, you then take them to a local veterinary clinic in order yes. to get them fixed? I usually try to trap the day ahead of time because you have to be at the clinics very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I trap the day ahead of time. I'll take them to my house and make sure they get some food and water up until the time that they're supposed to cut that off. And then the next morning, I will take them uh, to the clinics I have them covered because once you trap them, you need to cover them and they will calm down. Because mm -hmm. if you don't cover them, they'll keep banging back and forth and they'll bloody up their noses and faces. And we don't want that to happen. Sure. So I cover them. And uh, I take them to the clinics, check them in, and the clinics take over. They Most of the clinics, I pick them up the same day. Uh, Lynchburg, they hold them overnight. Uh, then I pick them up the next morning. And they're still under anesthesia, and you don't ever want to let an animal out right away while they're under anesthesia because then they're a walking victim, too. So right. I will take them, if the people don't have, like, a garage or something to set them in for another 24 hours, at least, I will take them back to my home, and I will set them up, make sure the cake, that trap is clean. If they're not, I put them, I put them into another trap. Uh, there's... They're not too small. I get I got the bigger traps and I keep them covered, give them water and food. And then the, later the next day, usually, or even another day later, I will take them back to where I got them from and release them. Okay. 
their so, smells are there. They know where they're at. They know where they live, you know, and so forth. So they are okay. They just can't procreate anymore. Yeah. All right. So you've been listening to Judy Zemer, who's the current president of Barn Cat Buddies, uh, headquartered in Salem, correct? That's where our post box is, yes. Gotcha. So uh, these veterinary services where you take your cats to get fixed, uh, I assume they're not all free. So, uh, um, no, <laughs> not by far. Right. Uh, they so, all. Yeah. What's the, a, what's the what's the what's the range in price for spay and neuter? For what for uh, usually a spay and neuter and a rabies shot. Uh, some other some of them give us a uh, flea medicine or something like that, put it on or something like that. But it ranges from thirty five dollars per cat to eighty dollars per cat. Okay. Um, and how is that paid for? That is paid for through a small grant or any grants we can manage to get and or uh, local donations from people. We have a mailing list that we send out, but we don't have a big marketing group yet because it's a tough job and it's hard to find people that are willing to do it. Yeah. Um, so that's, we survive by the public. Sometimes the people that I trap for they can pay a little bit. Sometimes they can pay the whole thing. I just tell them whatever you can you can manage. Every penny goes for the cats. Nobody gets paid. Nothing like that. Um, so all the money goes to taking care of cats, and that's how we keep going by the grace of God. Yeah, operating costs are kind of expensive too. Yeah. Gas and that sort of thing. And thankfully, people like Judy um, are at the beck and call of people who are asking for her help. So, I mean, it's unusual, you know, she's given her life to Barn Cat Buddies basically, <laughs> and she's a treasure. So, and she also educates the public. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so let's go back to, to Diane here. That was Diane Novak, the founding president or the founder of Barn Cat Buddies. So, you, we were kind of at the very beginning talking about kind of what is the problem with, you know, stray cats just not being allowed just to do whatever they want. And you, you know, mentioned obviously they're getting in trash. Um, you know, there's also, you mentioned rabies, you know, they're getting rabies shots, but I guess that's the potential that uh, rabies can be another disease. It it's, mm -hmm. it's not, a, it's not really widespread here. You don't hear about it a lot, no. but it's a precaution that you sure. want to get them. You always get them vaccinated at the time of the spay or neuter, but I, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, not all right. That's all right. Um, and then you're you're trying to then, you know, either release them back to where you found them, or you're trying to, I guess, taking in the the name of your organization, Barn Cat Buddies, trying to provide cats to places that might be needing some rodent control. Correct. Like a barn, a warehouse, that sort of thing. Sure. Okay. People get part of the problem with cats that you were trying to get us to say. Uh, people find them a nuisance because they either they're people that don't like them or they they'll poop in their gardens. Mm -hmm. They'll climb on their cars and scratch them, and they're just they if they don't like them then they're a nuisance simply because they don't like them. Yeah, and just, they prolificate so quickly and so much that there's just way too many out there they're living horrible lives they're getting run over they're starving they're getting diseased and just not living good lives and why live a life if it can't be at least a decent life sure and i know that bird lovers mm -hmm. oh yeah really you know yeah don't like cats because cats oh, I know. you know can can you know decimate bird lovers right or yeah. decimate birds yes they can. Yeah, yeah. That's so. why, you know, we try to tell people you still, whether we've donated, gotten them to a barn or whether it's a colony, you have to feed them. But yes, even if you feed them, they will still go to try to play with the birds because the birds are, they flutter. And so they're an attractant to, for the cat to want to play with it, want to hunt it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so there's that. And they're natural predators. Right, right, right. right. So the... Fewer cats that we have, perhaps the more birds that are then allowed to. It will be. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, right, right. Um, you know, 
do you feel as though you're making a difference? I think you... so. Um, yes. I mean, the it, the difference isn't obvious sometimes, and the pandemic shut us down for a while because the vets used the same products that doctors did. So mm -hmm. they had to stop surgery. So that, that kind of set us back. We felt like we were starting to make somewhere, and that kind of set us back. So we're kind of playing catch up from that. But yes, I mean, when I've gone to a business and cleaned out 40 cats or gone to someone's home and cleaned out 30, gotten fixed 30, 40, 50 cats and gotten some of them home and left some there, you know, with them. Yeah, you, you got to feel like you're making some difference. Just do the numbers in your brain and figure that cat, each cat can have multiple litters through the year, at least two to four litters in a year. And there's usually four to six cats in each litter. Wow. Yeah. Do the numbers. You, you know, and it's it, cumulative. Yeah. It's a cumulative effect. When you're walking down the street or somebody calls you up and say they have 30, 40 cats on the property, it's like, am I really making a difference? But you are. It's just not something that's real obvious to everybody, to the public and all. Because the cats are hidden, they you know they hide. They they take care of themselves that way. So, but yes. And you said last year you fixed five hundred cats. Yeah, yes. maybe a little over, it, maybe a little over that. Yeah, it it lot depends on how much time I can get with uh, the vets and how much money we have. Mm -hmm. To someone who you know perhaps is not a cat lover, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah and is just wondering, well, I mean, they're feral cats, they're stray cats. You know, why go to all the trouble, quote unquote, of trapping them, taking them to get fixed? Why not just find a, perhaps a quicker, more permanent means of making sure that they don't continue causing problems? What would you well, say? I kind of I'm sorry, I, I kind of equate it to like, well, the people on the that are living on the streets in the cities and all that aren't being taken care of by us. Should we just go out and shoot them? Gather them all up? Because cats and dogs, I mean, they're sentient beings. They, they, they feel they have feelings and they feel our feelings. If you have a pet dog or a pet cat and you're feeling terrible, they know it and they will come and try to comfort you. It's been shown that the, just the purr of a cat can help heal. Um, I know, I mean, I truly believe if I hadn't had cats all my life, there might have been a time or two that I would have shut the door on myself, so to speak. But they kept me going. And uh, it just, you know, we're supposed to be human beings, being kind, you know. So just taking something, rounding it up and poisoning it or putting it in a gas tank, you know, because it's not a human being that supposedly gives to society mm -hmm. you can't you know because cats animals do give to society we just don't recognize what they do for us yeah. but uh yeah that you know be kind about it if you don't like cats then then donate to us so we can Control. get them fixed <laughs> and so there will be less you know yeah. that's the way i look at it you know it, Especially if you don't like cats, then you really should donate us, donate to us. Because if you don't, then they're just going to keep procreating, and there's just going to be more and more of the things that you don't like. And yeah. and the flip side of that is that practically it doesn't solve the problem to round them up and kill them. That's that's not the way you control the cat population. I mean, you can do that, but then in you know the outer, the perimeter of the cats that have been kept out because of that colony will start to come in. That's called the vacuum effect. Mm. And so then you have that problem again. And sometimes you don't notice that for a couple more years. And by the time you notice it, there's 16, 20 cats there. So you really not, what happens is it's called a managed colony. Once a colony of cats are fixed, um, they keep out the outsiders, you know, they, and then you can work on that outsider colony mm -hmm. that's milling about. But you won't know, you know, the best way to um, have this handled is what we discussed as a spay, neuter, trap, neuter, return, or if they're in a precarious situation, move them to uh, a safe situation like uh, a barn home. Mm -hmm. And getting them to barn homes is also 
challenging because since 2007, a lot of other rescues have figured out that the cats that come into their facility could also do well on a barn. So we're all kind of competing for the same small number of homes. Um, so it's good. It's it's a great it's a great thing. Um, but sometimes you you need to market for more places and convince people that you know they need an outside cat to control things. And for a horse farm, um, if a mouse gets into a bag of grain, they can use hundred they can lose hundreds of dollars horse horse feed. Um, so it. And and once there's just like a little hole in that bag of grain, you have to throw out the whole bag because you don't want the horse mm -hmm. being, yeah, damaged by eating damage, I mean, hurt by eating damaged food. Um, because they'll dig in, they'll eat it, and then they'll do their defecate. They'll defecate in the same bag. Yeah. So it's yeah. a win-win. Yeah. And one thing I would like to say to the public is um a lot of people they don't they get a cat or a kitten or whatever, and then they call a vet and find out that this exorbitant amount that it is to get it fixed if you just ask the vet. And uh, so instead, they just toss the cat outside. Or they say, well, I'm going to take, I'm having trouble with this cat. I'm going to just take it down the road and take it out to the woods, and it'll be fine. It'll take care of itself. That's not true. Uh, they can to some extent, but if you just take a cat and just, put it out somewhere where it doesn't know. It has no knowledge of that area. It has no companions to help it stay alive. That's why when we do our barn program, our outdoor programs, we take the cat, we take cages, we take food, uh, the food dishes, we take litter boxes, scoops, the whole thing that they don't have to buy. And we ask them to keep them in there for three weeks that way the cat, it may not become friendly with them, and that usually doesn't matter to people, but it will bond enough with the human to know that is their human, that's the place they will get food. Mm -hmm. So then they're more likely, there's no guarantee, but they're more likely to stay around. And so after about three weeks, you say, open up the door and just let the cat come out on its own. We'll leave the cages there for another couple days or a week or whatever, and then I'll come get them again. But if you just take them and drop them, the cat doesn't know where to go. It doesn't know what to do. So it's going to run out there and more than likely get killed by another critter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, here, uh, joined here on Buzz for Good by uh, Diane Novak and Judy Zemer with Barn Cat Buddies. Uh, so you answered the question, I thought, very beautifully about why we should care about cats. Right. So now that you have convinced us that we need to care about cats and especially caring about work that your organization is doing by trapping feral cats, getting them fixed, getting their rabies shot so that they are, you know, live a healthier life, not only for themselves, but also for all of us around them. All right. How how can we support your work? Money, of course. Go to yep. bar, go to barncatbuddies.org. You can make a donation there. But what are some other ways that we can support Barncat Buddies? Well, we have um, donation bins in Pet Supplies Plus in Salem, at uh, Vets to Cats on Electric Road, and then at the Lake, we have one at Caps. You can donate uh, food. Um, canned food, dry food. Uh, you can also go on uh, Amazon. We have a wish list there. And uh, we are looking for somebody to write grants for us. They can look up grants and write grants for us. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, you know, if you have something, I can always pick up or meet somebody if they've got something to donate to us. Uh, you know, just a carrier. A carrier. Yeah. We we a lot of people with their pet passes, whatever, they'll bring all their stuff, their their bedding if it's good, and their their carriers, their stuff and like that. And we accept that. And if I if it's stuff I can't use, I've got a lot of, then I will check with other uh rescues or pounds or whatever, you know, places and see if it can be used. I don't throw things away. I try to get it used somewhere by okay. someone. 
system. Right. And sometimes um, people who are feeding the cats don't really have the wherewithal to continue to feed them. So Barn Cat Buddies helps with it's kind of a loose, I'll use a loose term as a food pantry, mm -hmm. but they'll deliver, you know, Judy will deliver the food to the colony feeder and that helps a lot and, um, or supplies. And uh, that's why a grant writer is so important. Sure. Um, we just, we have a little bit of knowledge, but we don't have that time um, to put into it. Um, so that's probably our biggest need right now. Would you say? Yeah. Plus money? Yeah. <laughs> money. Everybody always needs money, don't we all? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, did y'all? We're actually working on an episode right now on Mountain View Humane Society. Yes. Do y'all do, do any work with them? Well, we did when they were in Roanoke, but they're a little little bit far from me. They will take. They will give us some spots, but they're busy too. So yeah. usually only a couple spots, and it's really not worth the drive for me because actually I do a lot of work around the Roanoke area, but I live in Glade Hill, which is an hour away from Roanoke. So just getting in to do anything is already an hour. And then from there, it's another 45 minutes, whereas Lynchburg and Angels both are an hour away from my home. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Try, try, with the price of gas nowadays, you got to keep it as close <laughs> as you can. Sure. Sure. Well, um, if there's a possibility like I said, while we're working on this episode, maybe we could at least include, you know, your organization in there as far as, you know, maybe just um, a, a little bit about that. That'd be lovely. I'm sure they won't mind. Like that we've been associated with them in some degree sure. for a lot of years. Okay. Um, what else for right now? So you need a grant writer. What, what are some other marketing things that... Well, if there's people, you know, the, the problem with getting with volunteers is that um, people that want to volunteer with me, they only have weekends because they're they're working age and everybody has to work nowadays. Um, whereas a lot of the trapping has to be done and work has to be, transportation has to be done during the week, early hours of the week. So if there's anybody out there, you know, with seniors or something that still can lift and drive and all that, that we have the means to do a little transportation to the clinics or something like that, we'd be willing to accept their help. Um, unfortunately, their donation would have to be their time and their gas, which nowadays is tough. But uh, basically just knowing we have money to keep continuing to go at this point, then you know, if we end up with a nice bank account, then we can bring in hopefully more trappers and hopefully more clinics and at least be able to afford to pay a little more for the clinics to get it done if we have to, just in order to get numbers done. Yeah. And maybe at some point, you know, give the volunteer a gas card. If yeah. we had extra money, we could do that. That would be kind of a pull because a lot of people do want to help, but maybe they have the time, but they don't have the money to to do to go to Lynchburg or to go to a CC or wherever they're coming from. Um, so that that's a great point I didn't even think of. Oh, it would be goodness. nice if we could get some vets together to have spay days, you know, where they that veterinary clinic just does one day to do cats. Um, I hate the term feral. It's unsocialized to me because we're community cats. Yeah, community cats, you know, whatever. And uh, do a little more of that on a low cost price because I don't know if you've checked prices at vets of what they charge when you call and say my pet cat needs to be fixed. It's mind blowing. Mind blowing. <laughs> of course, I'm old, so I'm used to 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 cheaper prices of things in general. Probably paying four dollars for a loaf of bread kind of blows my mind when I used to pay a quarter. But you know, it's like you know, you call them up and it's like one hundred and forty, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. Like who yeah. can afford that? Right. But yet every and, and some people think that the poor, if they can't afford a vet to take the cat to a vet, then they shouldn't have a pet. And maybe there's some logic to that. Yes, but a lot of times the folks with the lesser means 
they need those pets more than we do because they just need the love and the support that the animal will give them. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'd be nicer if they had the money to take it and get its shots all the time. And if it got sick, take it to a vet right away and stuff like that. And they don't, but they, they need that love mm -hmm. a lot of time more than mm -hmm. folks that can afford to take it to a vet. I, I argue with myself all the time about that whole thing. You know, it's like, which is the right way. And, and I don't know the right way. I don't know whether there is a right way. I just kind of let the the guy upstairs guide me as to the decisions I make and where he puts me where I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be there, I guess. And do it that way. And you know, it's like a philosophical issue we, we argue amongst ourselves about. And, but it just seems like I was a social worker for many years and <clears throat> Then I worked in the school system for many years as a tutor, and I found that the families that had the leaf the, had the most animals. And some of that is financial because part of it is it's just a cat. Why bother? You know, the second part of it is I don't have the money. I have to spend money on clothes for my kids and food, and they usually have multiple children. <clears throat> they're going to have multiple animals too. It just goes together. That's how hoarding starts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> People just don't fix their first cat and then it just goes on and on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This is a conversation you, if you get into the, this with us, my gosh, we can we'll never, never shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Judy Zemer and Diane Novak with Barn Cat Buddies, and that's barncatbuddies.org. Thanks so much for coming on the bus for good and sharing with us about your mission. Thank you for Thank having you. Me. We appreciate you. Yes. Again, for more information about Barn Cat Buddies, go to barncatbuddies.org. So that was the cats portion of today's show. Let's now talk about caps as in the caps that signify graduation from high school. The next chapter in a young person's life can be fraught with uncertainty, and if they're not careful, a lot of college debt. But New River Community College, serving the New River Valley of Virginia, has an answer for that. It's ACE program, ACE standing for Access to Community College Education which fully funds two years of community college for any new high school graduate. And we are excited to present an episode of our TV show, Buzz, on Blue Ridge PBS on May 29th about this program. Here is some of that show, which includes some notable names for listeners, including Giles County Administrator Chris McClarney and former Virginia Tech Defensive Coordinator Bud Foster. Kids these days, they have no ambition, no work ethic. They don't care about their communities, don't appreciate the value of money, and don't think about their future. Well, if you believe that, you clearly haven't met the young men and women of the New River Valley of Virginia, who each year volunteer up to 100 hours on behalf of a nonprofit partnership that in exchange fully funds their college education. It's that kind of community helping community work that we are thrilled to feature on well, today's episode of Buzz. Uh, my name is Angie Covey, and I'm the Executive Director of the Educational Foundation at New River Community College. So Access to Community College Education, which we call ACE, started in Giles County in 2015. We were seeing at our college that there were a lot of young people in our community who just never thought college was within reach to them. They never thought it was an option. The language of college wasn't spoken at home. So when we created this program called ACE, it allowed, to give, it allowed us to give every student that promise of hope and that opportunity of college that so many of these students never thought that they would have. So the ACE program serves Montgomery Giles, Floyd Pulaski, Radford. Um, we usually serve about 400 students a year and our budget is just shy of a million dollars a year. Um, a student's tuition through ACE could be anywhere from a dollar to $5,000, just depending on how much financial aid that they receive. 
In order to receive ACE funding, students do community service. They give back to their community. So in Montgomery, Floyd, Radford, and Pulaski, the students do 80 hours each year. In Giles County, they do 100 hours. Our message to these young people is life's about contribution. And your community has stepped up. They're rallying around you. Your business leaders, your local government, your individual donors have all pulled their resources, to, resources together to provide the opportunity for you to go to college. So they're investing in you. So what we need you to do is invest back into your community through service work. And I have had so many conversations with students where they talk about the highlights of the program and they talk about their service in the community and what they learned from it and what they didn't realize was going on in the community with nonprofits. Um, a great example um, this past year, the Giles County students, part of their community service project is they were delivering meals on Christmas Day to needy families in Giles County. So all of the community service has some significant meaning to the receiver and to the giver, which is the student. My name is Thomas Coffey. I'm a student here at Edward via College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, I grew up here in Southwest Virginia, went to Blacksburg High School, and my family's originally from Giles County. Um, I pursued the ACE scholarship offered through my high school because it was the best financial opportunity for me and my family. Both my stepmom and my father have like supported me through so much, um, but at the time there was just a lot of family issues going on, so it was just me and my mom living here, and um, she was doing what she could, getting me through school. But she could, I mean, she could only work so much, and there was only so much financial help that she could provide. So she did what she could do, and this is what I could do, and the ACE scholarship offered me that opportunity. My high school was great, but I personally didn't get much out of high school except playing sports. That's the, really the only thing I loved. So I didn't apply myself to classes like I should have. I didn't further my education like I should have. And New River gave me the opportunity to do so. Medicine wasn't actually on the radar yet. I just knew I really liked science. Um, New River instilled this, their science program into me, and that's like, I, like I fell in love with chemistry there. Just great staff, great people. I just learned great things. Living in this community and then being able to help them at the age in which we were, we were 20, 21, and then being able to actually have like a, a meaningful impact, like working at the food pantry or even just cleaning up the parks, I mean, that's, that gives you something more than, like it makes you feel proud of the place you live in. As of right now, I mean, I really enjoy emergency medicine. I like the aspect of being the best thing on somebody's worst day, that, that really inspires me. And then being able to save someone's life and bring them back to their family, that, that just kind of, keeps me driven to what I'm pursuing. I probably wouldn't be here. Um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be here. I would probably, probably wouldn't have gone to college. The fi financials did not make sense, so I probably wouldn't be in college. Um, and I mean, the path a lot of my peers took was in the path that it seemed that I was on wasn't very productive, so I'd either be on that path or I'd be doing something completely different, but I certainly wouldn't be in college, and I definitely wouldn't be here, so, yeah. To give New River Community College's ACE program some buzz, it was clear they needed a marketing ACE of their own. Bruce C. Bryan, a Five Points Creative, back for his ninth episode of Buzz. This is a particularly interesting episode, I think, because we've got a, a group of people doing amazing work, like groundbreaking economic and generational change work, and, and yet... Um, they need help telling their story and getting the word out about what they're doing.
And I think one of the reasons this is particularly fascinating is it's a mix of educators, nonprofits, municipalities, and business leaders. And that pretty much covers it. Uh, so knowing that all those people have a vested interest in growing this program means there's momentum behind it. And anytime there's momentum behind something and you have a chance to lift it with marketing, it makes your job that much easier. So I can't wait to see how we help them and, and how it all fits together. I knew Five Points Creative had good cards up their sleeve to deal to Ace, so I hit the road from Roanoke to the New River Valley to meet the community that makes Ace possible. My first stop, the birthplace of Ace, Giles County. So the, the ACE program now has a 100 hour requirement of community service and we have a program called ACE All In where we're going into the community and you know, we're building handicap ramps for people uh, in their homes. Uh, we're partnering with industry and they're also helping out. So kids are learning uh, you know, life skills, they're also learning about their community. Uh, it's our hope that they don't just get an education from the community college, which is an excellent one, by the way, but we're also in hopes that they learn about life and how to become a citizen and how to become a, a good community member and to participate in their community and learn to become leaders and you know, develop a sense of charity, uh, a sense of compassion for people and understand what it means to give back. And so tonight, they'll get to meet with people who are funding their education and hopefully they'll learn uh, what that takes and what that means. Uh, and then they will get to give back themselves one day. So my name is Chase Jernell and I am studying the instrumentation program at the New River Community College. My name is Kaylee Hopkins and I'm studying police science and forensic science at New River Community College. My name is Ryan Gilbart and I'm studying business administration at New River. My name is Ryan Broyles and I study nursing at New River Community College. My name is Gavin Fall and I'm studying electrical engineering at New River Community College. My goal is to get into property management uh, in Blacksburg with uh, Virginia Tech in the area um, and the business administration major is going to help me do that. I hope to become an ICU nurse at whatever hospital. I'm open to anything. So with that instrumentation program I want to be able to go on to uh, great career and make plenty of money obviously. Uh, I'm going to hopefully get back to my community where I'm working at, hopefully calibrate water gauges and stuff that kind of helps filter our water system, keep everything clean in our you know great community. Be successful, make it out, um, get in the field, find a good job. We worked with um, students from the ACE program on several things we've done in the community and having young people involved is incredible. People like, whoa, how's that happening? And well, they're getting a chance to get their foot in the water with, with service. We're doing a project right now through our church where we're bringing 120 meals to um, All the senior citizens in the community every month, and they're helping us deliver that. And those seniors I think, really enjoy getting a chance to see those the young people. They like the meal, but I think they like having young people come even more. For my community service, I actually worked at Giles County Administration and then for other all-in projects, ACE all-in projects, um, we did a Christmas Day dinner where we fed over a hundred people on Christmas Day. And then we also did senior supplies distribution where we deliver food and other household supplies to people in need in our community. I've been involved with the Giles County maintenance crew. Uh, all over Giles County, so we've been doing uh, various repairs to government buildings and upgrades to the government buildings. I have really enjoyed um, giving supplies to people in need in our community. Um, the river cleanup, that was really eye-opening. Tonight, McClarney has his own ace in the hole as keynote speaker. Former Virginia Tech football defensive coordinator and local legend Bud Foster, who has his own nonprofit, Lunch Pail Defense, that helps young people access college. The one thing that these kids, and I've got my, my hat goes off to these young people because of what they've been through the last four or five years with the pandemic and, and the current way, uh, or there for a, uh, a stretch, the, the way of learning was, uh, was challenged. Sometimes the best teachers experience, and they've been able to experience some different things that I know my generation or, or you maybe didn't have to go through right now, particularly in a learning area. But, you know, it, just the, um, the impact that it makes on them and their future, 
Um, I think is incredible. It's hard to put a price tag on it, but it means so much. It shows to a lot of people, particularly uh, business people, I think, that you have somebody that has integrity, you have somebody that has drive, you have somebody that has a work ethic. And, you know, and that's, that's more important now than ever. What would your life be like without the ACE program? Probably pretty boring. Um, I don't know really what I'd be doing. I'd probably working every day, I guess, and less dedicated to school if I would even be in school. Yeah, would you have been able to go to school without the tuition assistance that comes from ACE? Probably not. It would definitely been a financial struggle. See, without the ACE program, I would be paying out of pocket for all my classes and all the tuition. And uh, with the ACE program, I get to start on life without any student loans or anything like that. And it's a big relief, especially in today's world where everything's so expensive. So without that ACE program, you know, I'd, I'd just be in debt right off the bat and have to pay all that money back just immediately. Probably very boring. <laughs> very boring. We, do, we are very involved in our community and it's probably every day I think about something within ACE. Without the ACE program I would not have discovered my um, love for criminal justice and I would not have been able to pursue that. So I really thank all of our sponsors and everybody who supports the ACE program. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't really tell you. I'm the third of uh, my family to go through the ACE program and most likely I would not be pursuing my college education. So the ACE program means a college education for me. And I mean, without the opportunity to go to college, what would you be doing? It's hard to say. Probably floundering in a low-income job somewhere. To see ACE in action in the community, my next stop was the Montgomery County Animal Care and Adoption Center where I met siblings and New River Community College students, Paulus Gorzicki and Lydia Gorzicki. So after NRCC, I am planning on taking a bit of a gap year, and then afterwards I want to become an art teacher. After I graduate NRCC, I wish to transfer to a four-year and study uh, administrative education. Being home helped so much. I was able to work a little bit more, and I didn't have to stress about, you know, if I was going to be able to pay for my class or pay for my car like New River has helped me so much in honestly every aspect that I couldn't even think about. And the negative stigma that people have towards community college isn't true at all towards the fact that you get the same education at a lower rate. New River offered me a lot of help for the just not only can controlling my stress but as well as being home close to mom so I believe I believe taking ACE was probably the best solution because I didn't want to put her in financial stress. Um, she could have paid for a few but I, I didn't want her to do too much. We have other siblings, so we're not the only ones in our family, and so I feel like putting us into a four-year right after high school would just been too much for our family and too much for what was going on at that time when we first started community college. Um, and so having the ACE program and having that, that little bit of a guide towards that um, first couple years of college definitely helped us and our family, and I think we're both very glad that we took this opportunity. My name is Lauren Cruz. I'm from Pulaski, Virginia. I graduated from Pulaski County High School and I'm studying forensic science here at New River Community College. I'm Harmony Pratt. I graduated from Floyd County High School in 2021 and I'm now in the associate's degree of nursing in New River Community College. My name's Tyler Pierman and I graduated from Giles High School in 2023 and I'm now attending the Precision Machine Program here at New River. My name is Andrew Moore. I uh, graduated from Radford High School in 2023, currently completing the instrumentation program at New River Community College. So I was going to have to pay for college on my own, so it was just really good to have that two years free to be able to save money to go ahead and further my education. So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do career-wise. Um, I was stuck between, you know, Virginia Tech, Radford University, but in high school they told us about this ACE program, and it was two years free, so I decided I might as well come here for free while I figure out what it is exactly I wanted to do instead of just getting into debt and racking up student loans when I don't need to. I guess just the further I got into the college search, the sticker shock really, you know, set in that like that's a lot of money. When I heard from um, other people that had finished the um, instrumentation program here, they're making money that people I know that have four-year degrees are not making, and I was like, I can't you know, 
I can't rationalize paying that much when I know that there's secure jobs out here and I won't go into any debt. So we're just like a middle class family, you know. We not that we don't have money, but I just didn't want too much on them. Mr. Snow, he's the best teacher I could ask for. Um, and I actually switched into forensic science um, my second semester here. Um, I just decided that, you know, I, I like my criminal justice classes in high school, so I decided, you know, I might as well, if it interests me, I could just take a leap and just to see if I really want to do that and if I really liked it, and I really do. So I started out in the 11th grade making a couple custom parts here and there in the high school just for my truck to be one off, something different than everybody else had, and it ended up growing little by little, and before I knew it, I was starting to make a couple parts here and there for other people, and so I decided to start my own little business that I hope one day grows into something that I can run full time and keep my machinist background to fulfill my car hobbies, and so me and my bro little brother started a business called TNT Performance, and we're growing slowly but surely, but We've made things from traction bars to front engine accessory brackets and everything right here at school. That's really helped grow the business and be able to show people all around the world. So community service, it was really cool. I was actually able to go back to Radford High School. And um, I've helped with the football team, um, behind the scenes, game days, making sure everything goes as planned there. And it was cool because I was four years for the football team at Radford High School. So it was cool being able to go back, watch those guys I played with. They won the state championship this past year. So it's cool to be a part of that and be able to give back to the community. Um, I've done a little bit at Pulaski Elementary School, but most of them through Dublin Elementary School. I went to elementary school there, so it was kind of cool just to, you know, give back to where I originally came from. Like Andrew, I was able to go back to my home place and I ended up going to the high school and we have an agricultural farm behind the school and during the summer I got to take care of that while the kids wasn't there. I got to bottle feed baby calves, mow the grass, and really just take care of anything from picking eggs every day from the chickens and uh, letting the cows in and out of their gates and taking care of them, making sure they get in the chute and making sure that they're healthy all summer long while the kids weren't there. I had a lot of fun doing that. I hope to go to Radford and get my bachelor's of science in nursing and of course go ahead and get a job as a RN while I'm doing that. So I want to do forensic radiography. Um, I like the science aspect of forensic science more so to law enforcement and that side. Um, my plan after here is to go to Virginia Western Community College up in Roanoke and hopefully complete a radiography degree from there. Okay, so I'm enrolled in the first year in the instrumentation program. Uh, now it's learning a lot of PLC programming, um, being able to control inputs at certain voltage levels and have different outputs for those things. As we move forward programming, it's going to be going into robotics, automated systems, um, and working on getting them to do certain tasks and um, calibrate those in an accurate manner. At car and truck shows, it's definitely got plenty of attention, so I decided to start social media accounts that's grown to well over 10,000 followers. Just showing these parts and the adventures that I've taken of building this truck from something that was my grandpa's that he bought in the 90s that he used as a farm truck to now being shown on all sorts of platforms, even being shared to big sites like Custom Offsets that has several hundred thousand followers that have seen what's been built right here at home in Giles County. Yeah, without ACE, I would have spent a whole lot more money <laughs> than I would have wanted to. So it's been really nice to have that. And being able to go out, hopefully make decent money, and um, be able to spend that and start my life a little bit quicker is going to be nice. Uh, debt hanging over your head is no fun. These colleges now, you know, the price is way up there. So, so it's definitely very appealing, and having a great college like New River right here at home is just hard to beat. It has definitely been a way easier decision knowing that I have Ace in my back pocket. Once again, tune in to Blue Ridge PBS or our YouTube channel, Buzz for Good, on May 29th at 7 p.m. to watch our Buzz episode on New River Community College's Ace program. Until then, Thank you so much for listening. Keep being a buzz for good in your community. 
And we will see you next time here on our show, Buzz for Good. Bye now. <laughs>